Street Racing Double Feature, Mischief Invasion, and Hype R. Playing this month on Dish On Demand Pay-Per-View. With Mount Rainier standing guard nearby, Tacoma, Washington is home to this week's Friday night fight. This area is overflowing with breathtaking views mixed with city style, and tonight, the Emerald Queen Casino is hopeful that it will also be known for its top flight boxing. Tacoma's own Emmett Linton feels it's time to take the risk in the ring. He'll look to do that in our main event against Dorian Beaupierre. First up, a potential free swinging slugfest. Two great Northwest base cruiserweights collide. Luke Munson and Chad Van Sickle face off. There's 24 year old Luke Munson, he comes from Spokane. He started his pro career with a brawling style, but as he's matured in the course of those four and a half years, he thinks he's a little more well-rounded. He was undefeated into his 14th fight. That's when he lost an eight-round split decision to Marcus Harvey, as you see in his last five. Munson has feasted on the competition, mostly from eastern Washington and Idaho. He faces the outgoing, the energetic Chad Van Sickle. He's born and raised outside of Columbus, Ohio, and Chad moved here to Tacoma four months ago, signed with a local promoter. That's why he made the move. It's a perfect 17-0. His last five will show you only 17 total rounds, though. It's been four straight knockout wins for Chad. Neither of these fighters has gone a full 10 rounds, and based on what they think of this matchup, there's a good chance that they may not go 10 rounds tonight either. Where I got down, I, my pressure is, is, is probably my uh, my biggest strength. Uh, what I need to work on the most is probably defense right now, uh, better boxing, and I think you'll see that enough this fight. I think he's a good fighter, but I think I can do just about everything better. So, want to hit harder than him, be faster than him, move better, work harder, and. Uh, Pretty much just beat him all the way around the board. I'm expecting him to come out hard. They say he's a big puncher. I don't think he's that big of a puncher. Uh, he's a big left hooker. He can be hit pretty easy. Bobby Howard, your referee. Once again, a scheduled 10 rounder. Professional ring experience. Luke Munson, well, as you see there, that's Bo Pierre Litton still to come in our main event. We're looking forward to that main event tonight. In this fight there, there's Luke Munson, who has spent his whole life in the state of Washington, but he's on Van Sickle's turf because Chad has fought here at the Emerald Queen four times since January, and he even took a job as a bartender here at the casino. So it's his night, his crowd, his turf. Let's see if it goes his way. One of the biggest differences in this fight that makes come into play and separate these two if you're scouting early. Munson's been much smaller, Joe. Turned pro 183 pounds. Last fight, 189 tonight, 188 pounds. Then Sickle, much, much bigger. Turned pro 258. Dropped down. Last three fights, 190 and about. Last fight, he was 199 tonight. He's down to 193 pounds, five pounds bigger tonight than Munson. He's been a much bigger guy, you figure. That, that may equate it to him being much stronger. But Van Sickle, we will see. What might be telling is they both have fought the same kind of opposition. The only difference, obviously, is Munson has lost his one loss to one of those guys in that competition where Van Sickle has beaten so far, that kind of competition. Size advantage, we just talked about being bigger and dropping down. Also height advantage for Van Sickle. Now we gotta see if he uses it. And that means using your jab and punching at the right distance. You can see Van Sickle's at least thinking in there. So he took a little step back, seeing if he could bait Munson into maybe reaching in. Munson came in behind the lead right hand there, now tied up on the inside. Neither one of these guys much of an amateur background, so when you're a little raw in that area, you're learning on the job. So you might not see a guy like Van Sickle, who does have a size advantage, have the confidence, the expertise to use that size advantage. Not yet. One, two. 
loosens up that left hand and throws the hook off of it, does Dan Sickle. Chad Van Sickle, after high school, where he was an amateur boxer, took part in some tough man competitions, ballooned up to 310 pounds, told himself that he needed to get back into shape, and if he could get under 270, he would turn pro. He did just that at 258, and the weight just kept dropping. Give Munson credit. He's a guy, as I said, has a big amateur background. A little raw, they still have to learn on the job, but... I like the way he's stepping, he's bringing his feet months, and he's not reaching in with the taller man, and Van Sickle's trying to get him to reach by stepping back and making that gap a little larger. But Munson taking steps, bringing his feet. A lot of times you see raw guys without amateur backgrounds, they reach in, they let their upper body get ahead of their feet. Not the case with Munson, also Munson moving his head. He understands the need to be smart for defense. ESPN2 Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low carb Miller Lite. And in part by Britta, the simple solution for healthier, great tasting water. Well, out here you got lots of options for transportation. You can vote over to the Tacoma Dome. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you from the great Northwest. Emmett Litton, Dorian Beaupierre in our main event tonight, Teddy. Pretty good main event. Emmett Litton. 36 fights into his pro career, and he's talking about changing styles. Are we going to get a more risk-taking, exciting Emmett Linton tonight, Teddy? Well, we got Tyson coming up, so I might as well use this phrase that Customato used to use. People born round don't die square. And I don't think at this point Linton's going to change his style. He's a counterpuncher. He's going to look for a little help from Beau, Beau Pierre, and he's going to look to be uh, what he is, a southpaw, a cutie, a guy who's good defensively, and a guy who can counter a little bit. Paul Pierre, as you see him relaxing there, he's going to have to go in and out, and he's going to have to deal with the great step up and experience. And you have youth in Paul Pierre versus experience and age, of course, in Linton. Should be interesting. So Emmett Linton, Dorian Paul Pierre, that is still to come. In our main event, round number two here, Chad Van Sickle wearing the white trunks with blue lettering. Luke Munson in the dark blue trunks. Told you that Chad Van Sickle was a tough man competitor. Says he took part in two competitions, but he knows that Teddy Atlas frowns upon tough man contests, and Chad considers himself to be a dedicated amateur boxer who turned pro and does have some semblance of skills. Teddy, he's actually a very big, long-standing fan six years now into the series of Friday Night Fights. And in discussing things with him yesterday, he went to great extents to say how important it is, you see them replacing the mouthpiece now for long Peter months, and how important it is for him to impress you tonight. I appreciate that thought. The most important thing is for him to impress himself. Are you sure he's sure of that? To take care of business. To just try to be solid in the areas they work so hard on in the gym. Both these men work so hard on. And as far as me looking down or frowning down on tough man contests, that's not true at all. Anyone who can step up those steps, walk from that locker room, that's a long walk. It might look like it's about 50 yards, but it becomes about a, a mile. To have the guts, the courage to walk out of that locker room. I mean, our terrific host or co-host there in the studio, our guest, Buster Douglas, the former heavyweight champ of the world, he will tell you that. That's the hardest thing to do is to wait before a fight and then to walk into that ring. So anyone who can do that, I don't care if they're tough men or not, I give them credit. But I, I make the statement that they might be a little raw. And right now, Munson showing just a little bit more form. Three left hands scored for Munson here in the second round. Well, he's doing it with good science. He's doing it with a little bit better technique now. Again, he's bringing his feet. He's not reaching in with the shorter guy. Give him credit for that, Munson. He's taking steps. And he's moving his head when he needs to. A lot of times when you see a fairly even match, and this looks like a pretty good even match, good job by the matchmaker. And that's what makes good fights. You don't have to have the greatest talent in the world. Just You have to have some talent. You have to have desire with those two participants. And you have to have a pretty even matchup, competitive matchup. It seems like we have that. And Sickle doubling up the jab, went to the body. When you have a pretty even matchup, usually the guy who has a little bit better defense can separate himself, can have an advantage. That might be the case with Munson. 
Well, Van Sickle admitted to us he knows that he lacks defensively. He feels that pressure is his biggest asset. And he needs to be a better boxer and more defensive-minded. You see the warning being handed out by Bobby Howard. Well, one of the things Munson better do, and again, Buster Douglas, the former heavyweight champ, can tell you this, you better not leave that left hand out there. Because he left it out there before he got hit with a right hand. And all at once I knew, I knew it once. the world's greatest rescue organization, equipped with a fleet of the most advanced vehicles known to man. There's no risk they won't take. Our duty is to save those people. No danger they can't handle. And no enemy Kill them all. they can't face. Time to send our eyes. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Today, Ready PG, now play. Round number three of our first fight this week on Friday Night Fights. Couple of cruiserweights, Luke Munson from Spokane, Washington, and Chad Van Sickle, originally from Ohio, who moved out here to the coma after he signed with his promoter. Van Sickle in the white, Munson in the blue. All of Munson's connects so far in the first two rounds have been power punches. He has yet to land a jab. See the punches in round two. It's 11 of 49. Van Sickle, 21 of 57 for 37 percent. But a, a few good left hands in that second round for Munson may have carried the round, Teddy. Well, some good left hands. I thought Munson won that last round. Some good left hands early. We'll see how consistent he is. Van Sickle, a definitive change here. In this, in this round, in this third round for Ben Sickle. And after that last round where I believe he definitely lost and he got caught some good leather, he needed to come out here with a definite change. He's jabbing from the right distance and he's snapping that jab so far, Ben Sickle. Got caught as he came in that time, but you can see that he clearly is trying to administer work with that left hand, Teddy. Did so in the first minute of this third round through 14 jabs in the first minute alone. Both these fighters are true to what their assets are and their lack of assets. They should be both looking at different jobs. Van Sickle, his job should be on the outside, snapping that jab, creating a line of distance. We have tried to force Munson to reach in. Munson should be working his way in, bringing his feet, moving his head, trying to get inside that longer reach of Van Sickle. And that's exactly what you see so far. Let's see who's going to be better at it. Who's going to get their job done? Lead right hand from Luke Munson. And as Van Sickle falls in, he places a left. You know, it's so easy to say Van Sickle needs to use that jab because he's bigger, he's taller. But that's not enough. He's got a jab from the right distance. If he jab from too close, or if it's a point jab, a lazy jab, then of course Munson has a say, and his say could be with the right hand over it. So it's not so simple to just say, yeah, the guy's taller, he's gonna win with the jab. He's got a jab at the right time, the right distance. Like the old timers would say, he needs to test hot water with that jab. Snap it, get it back fast. As his jab goes, he goes so far for Van Sickle. When it's a snappy jab from the right distance, he's doing well. More good scoring from Luke Munson against the unbeaten Chad Van Sickle. Watching Friday Night Fight, presented by Miller Lite.
Vegas Games 10, live Thursday through Saturday at 9 on ESPN. Sliding in the right-hand corner. When you have a shorter guy coming in with a tall guy, you can get a headbutt. Well, look at that. Munson's head bangs right into the chin of Van Sickle. So if Van Sickle has a pretty good chin, he can take a skull on it. He's got a pretty good chin, but you got to watch out that that head doesn't come up a little higher, and all of a sudden, you're going to have a cut in this fight. Round number four, they are scheduled for ten. Two cruiserweights who have built up their records and now stepping up against each other. Both residing now in Washington. Munson from Spokane. Van Sickle originally from Columbus, Ohio, home of our in-studio guest tonight. Buster Douglas now resides out here in Tacoma. He's become a little bit of a fan favorite. He works right here at the Emerald Queen Casino and has fought here four times since January. Some blood on the top of the head of Munson, but I believe that's from his nose, which has been bleeding the last two rounds. Yeah, he started with a little bit of a nosebleed in the second round. Wasn't much of a factor, but now you can see a little more pronounced here as this fight heads into the fourth round. Comes in with that lead right once again scoring. That's going to be good form or it's going to be his downfall, that right hand of Munson. If he reaches with it, he's going to get caught with a counter at some point. If he's thrown it from the right distance, he's going to land it over the jab of Van Sickle. It's going to do him good or it's going to do him bad. We'll find out. If you were back of Van Sickle, there's only one thing you'd have to say in the corner. I want to keep seeing red on the nose of Munson. Because if you see that, then you know Van Sickle's jab is working. Just landed one moments ago. And there's the jab that landed on Van Sickle, which I think this fight plan should start with. It'd be 90 or at least 80% of. Get out of there. Get out of there. But if he leaves it out there, then you're going to see that right hand of Munson become a factor as far as his strategy goes. Buster Douglas can tell you there's two ways to take away a man's jab. People used to try to do it to him all the time. Stop. One is to out jab him. Let your jab dominate the other fella's jab. Move your head a little bit, out jab him. The way Jake LaMotta, the great middleweight, used to do when he had to fight great fighters like Sugar Ray Robinson, even though he was shorter. The other way is right hands over that jab. Make the jab up a little tentative about throwing that jab. There's that jab of Van Sickles. We haven't seen much of the counter right from Luke Munson. He's been leading with it when he's utilized the right hand at times. We'll see if he develops that. Again, what's been effective for Van Sickles is the jab, but watch. It's effective when he throws it at the right distance. When he controls distance, that jab is a big part of it for Van Sickles. Let's head back to the studio and check in with Brian and Buster. Guys? Joe, thank you so much. And we've heard so many good reports from Freddie Roach on Mike Tyson being in top shape. And, you know, Buster, he looks like he's in top shape, just looking at what he's, you know, as far as how ripped he is and everything else. But the weigh-in last night, I don't, a bit of a surprise. This is about what they expected, and Tom Patty had said as much. Tyson weighing in at 233 pounds. Of course, Danny Williams coming in at 265. And now against Buster Douglas, 1990, Tyson, 220 pounds, and that's where he was at his peak for Michael Spinks at 218. It's been as high as 239 against Brian Nielsen. What do you think of the weight, Buster? I think the weight is good. You know, you got to consider Mike's age, and uh, I think he's putting on more muscle mass. You know, so that's always the excuse for guys, though, isn't it? That oh, yeah. I'm very muscular now, and they're yeah. wearing a little more. I mean, that could be the case here. I've used it a couple of times. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but no, you know, I think it's the more muscle mass, and uh, you know, he's in good shape. All right, uh, good shape uh, physically, and we'll see good shape mentally a little later on tonight. We'll talk more with Buster throughout the evening about Mike Tyson and Danny Williams. Right now, let's get back to Joe and Teddy, guys. Thanks, Brian. Fifth round here, our first fight tonight on Friday Night Fights. Emmett Linton and Dorian Beaupierre to come in our main event. This is a good cruiserweight clash of locals. Luke Munson in the blue trunks with black trim. Chad Van Sickle wearing the white with blue lettering. Body shot, left hand goes to the body from Munson. You see the jabs in round four. Teddy's been talking about that. 16 to one edge for Van Sickle. Well, Chad Van Sickle grew up near Columbus, and as a 12-year-old boy, he marveled and celebrated as their hometown hero, Buster Douglas, won the heavyweight title. You know, growing up in Columbus, Ohio, you had two people. You had Woody Hayes, and you had Buster Douglas. You know, when Buster beat Mike Tyson, it made everyone in Columbus feel special. You know, you had someone you can identify with. 
Uh, Buster Douglas was probably, you know, a hero growing up. You know, everyone looked up to him. You, you just felt you felt proud being from Columbus with Buster Douglas. You know, he, he was just an outstanding individual. You know, he built a recreation center, rural pearl center. He's just outstanding human being. And the other Douglas connection for Chad Van Sickle is that he defeated Buster's brother, William Douglas, last July in a six-round fight. Let's bring in the former heavyweight champ, Buster Joe and Teddy with you. Well, he says two heroes in Columbus, Woody Hayes and Buster Douglas. My question is, who has the better right hand, Buster Douglas or Woody Hayes? Woody could throw a punch. <laughs> well, Buster, what do you think of Chad? what's in the right hand of Woody Hayes. Buster, what do you think of Chad so far tonight? I think Chad's doing a tremendous job. You know, he just has to pick it up a little bit, use both hands, because he's, he's, he's got that right hand up high looking out for my man's left hook. But uh, I think if he go ahead and start coming with combinations, you know, he might be able to slow this guy down because he's trying to pick the pace up on him. So he has to pick the pace up as well. Buzz, it's Teddy here. I agree with you. Van Sickle is using that jab sort of to set the table, but... As soon as he starts setting the table, you want to see him go eat a little bit with the right hand behind it, wouldn't you say? Right. He's, he's really pawing with the right hand. He's got to really let that right hand go. See, he's reaching. You know, he's got to step with his punches. He's trying to be a little bit too cautious. You know, every time he touches him with that uh, left, left hand, he should be able to hit him with the right hand. Use it like a radar. Use that left hand like a radar. As soon as he touches, let that right hand go right down the pipe. Uh, and of course, you want to you want to see the jab that you want to see from Van Sickle, plus I'm sure is from the right distance and a snapping jab. A lot of people think if you have a jab, you're taller, you're just gonna jab the guy. But you gotta do it from the right distance. When Van Sickle does that, he's effective. Right, Ted, he's very effective, but he has to step in with that right hand because he has the ability, he has the skill, but he has to just relax and let his hands go. Buster, we thank you for your time. We'll be visiting with you all night long. The former heavyweight champion. Good exchange here at the end of round number five. Munson, Van Sickle, more to come. Western Union has over 170,000 agent locations worldwide, so chances are there's one near you. I just picked up... Izquierda. Fue un, ro un rozón. Ahí fue, ahí fue cuando te comienzas a poner tú la, la, la mano derecha sobre lo... Breaks loose. Hey, I'm on your side. Hellboy, get it on two-disc DVD today. Now, when you buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas from Domino's, you get them for just $5 each. That means pepperoni guy, mushroom guy, and sausage guy can each get their own pizza for just five bucks. Hey, who invited I'll pay you tomorrow guy? Big news from Domino's. It's the 555 deal. Call now and buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas and pay just $5 each. Get the door. It's the 555 deal from Domino's. Now the back of Luke Munson as he heads out to the sixth round. of a heated fight now against undefeated Chad Van Sickle. Munson, a quiet and religious young man outside the ring, but carries a reputation as a fierce brawler and a big puncher and competitor inside the ring. Comes from Spokane, Washington. Speaking of Spokane, Teddy, back in 1931, Jack Dempsey fought five opponents in one day at Gonzaga Stadium in Spokane. The five fights took just over 11 minutes for Dempsey to complete. 10,000 fans showed up to see the former champ accomplish that feat. Teddy Atlas's scorecard through five rounds, 49 47, the last two rounds going to Van Sickle. When Van Sickle controls the outside, he does well. Munson wants to be in close. He's in close now. He's been working to get in close. But then you have to ask the question, why didn't he keep his hands free? There's no sense in working hard to get in close. If you're not going to move your hands once there. I was talking about earlier, if you're the guy with the jab and the size that Van Sickle has, a lot of people would think you just stay outside your jab. Well, you have to jab at the right distance. It has to be a snappy jab. And as Buster Douglas made a very good point of, you have to do something behind it. Because sooner or later, your opponent, if he's willing, will walk through that jab if there's nothing coming after it. Chet, watch me. 
Time in. Box. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Coming to you from the Emerald Queen Casino in Tacoma, Washington. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas ringside. Buster Douglas, Brian Kenny in studio tonight. Luke Munson, Chad Van Sickle. Munson in the blue and black. Van Sickle in the white with blue lettering. He is the undefeated fighter from Ohio who signed a promotional contract and moved out here to Tacoma and has become a local favorite. But he's getting a good taste of how tough and determined Luke Munson is tonight. This is a nice competitive fight. Even matchup on paper, good matchup in the ring. And just a minute ago, what I and Buster Douglas were talking about. Yeah, you got to use that jab of your fast sickle, but if it's not a snapping jab, or Munson, he has a choice too. He has an alternate, he has an option. That's the right hand open. And just a moment ago, about 30 seconds ago, Munson landed a good right hand over that jab of Van Sickles. Teddy Munson, right, right. in each of the past three rounds, has targeted that left hand downstairs, left hand upstairs, but is yet to connect cleanly with it. There it is again, the snapping jab from both men. Scheduled for 10. Almost six rounds in the books here. Playing this month on Dish On Demand pay-per-view. This is not what it looked like. He's a time store hooker and she always will be. Oh, my God. Along came Polly. Oh, man. I got a dream. What is your dream? To have a dream. I'm prophesizing my foot halfway up. Scary Movie 3. Take a break from routine TV. Order a pay-per-view movie from Dish On Demand. See what not to wear before we see you. All new episode tonight at 10 on TLC. Look good, feel good. Now. When you get on the ropes, your hands got to be here, okay? Sliding in the right hand corner, you're gonna see what we were talking about. A slow jab, a jab that's left out there, and a right hand right over it by Munson. Here's another look. Slow jab, it's left out there. You gotta test hot water. Buster Douglas will tell you, you can't leave it out there. Well, Van Sickle left it out there. Munson scored a nice right hand, maybe enough to carry the round since that was the hardest punch. CompuBox punches through round number six. Van Sickle 129 to 69, Van 35%. But Teddy, I think this may be one of those examples where you look at the punch stats and you say, yes, the punch stats favor Van Sickle, but there's been some very effective work by Munson when he has landed. Many times he has had the harder, more effective punches, like that short right hand on the inside right there. It's not just that you land, is what you're saying. You're so right, Joe. Professional boxing. It's how hard you land, how effective you land. And you can make an, an argument that Munson, to a certain extent, has done better in that category, at least in enough rounds to have him very close in this fight, as I do. The jab's not enough. Again, as Buster Douglas was saying, yeah, it's great to jab, but if you don't put something behind it, you're not gonna hold the guy off. He'll start walking through that jab. He'll have confidence to come forward. Munson has that confidence to come forward. Not enough with the jab of Van Sickles. And Sickle straightens him up with a right hand. When you start using a jab the way Van Sickle is depending on it, well, a lot of your game depends on a jab, as Van Sickles does. You want to educate that jab, educate that left hand. Do other things off it. Hook off it. And you just saw it there by Van Sickle. You can see in the gym, they have been working on educating that jab, teaching it to speak more than just English. Van Sickle laid out the left hand again. Munson came with the right. There you can see Van Sickle showing some form, showing some science, thinking a little bit. Jabbing, stepping back, looking for the counter hook, hoping Munson would walk into it. 